where does creativity fit into compliance? In more places than you think. Problem solving, accountability, communication, and connection. They all take creativity. Join your hosts, Tom Fox and Ronnie Feldman on Creativity and Compliance, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox uh, back with Ronnie Feldman for another episode of Creativity and Compliance. As we promised in our last episode, we have a really interesting show for you today. So, Ronnie, I'm going to pitch it over to you. Today, we have um, BMO Financial on. We have Carrie Salata. Am I saying your name correct? Yeah. Oh, great. I've never actually said your last name out loud. Uh, we have Carrie Salata, who's the, she's the Director of Ethics and Conduct uh, at BMO Financial, and Tiffany Giblin, who's the Senior Manager of Corporate Communication at BMO Financial. Um, I'm really excited to talk to these guys. We've been working with uh, BMO, the BMO Ethics, ethics Office for several years now um, on different creative campaigns, usually focusing on project this past year talking about risks from working from home. And so we want to focus on that today. Um, uh, for those of you who have uh, followed this podcast, um, we had Ula Ubani, who was the chief ethics officer for BMO on last year talking about this Actions Matterly uh, BMO on the street campaign. So uh, Tom, maybe you can link to that in the notes. Um, and that was a really fun project, and then we, it's evolved over the years. Um, so for those who haven't listened to that episode, maybe we can just start out. Uh, Carrie and Tiffany, can you kind of just tell everybody a little bit about who Actions Matterly is, a little bit about the, that concept, um, just to give everyone a frame of reference? It's a great question. <laughs> uh, who is Actions Matterly? I mean, he's... Uh, He's, he's a celebrity of BMO. Um, he's, he's kind of an off the wall reporter who kind of a happy go lucky guy who kind of always gets the ethical issue wrong. And, um, it's not out of maliciousness that he gets the ethical issue wrong. He gets it wrong because he just doesn't know what the right answer is. And then what that does is that encourages the employee population to figure out what the right answer is and to correct actions. What do you think, Tiffany? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And it was, uh, I have had the pleasure of being on this uh, Actions Matterly journey from the very beginning. Um, and thank you for having us on your podcast. Uh, I'm extremely proud of it and extremely thrilled with the way it has turned out. And the initial concept was really having a bumbly reporter um, talking about, you know, our code of ethics and conduct. And it was really from a place where this is very important for us culturally at BMO. There was no issue we were trying to address. It was just that this is a very, very important part of our culture. It's something we're really, really proud of continually working on and wanting to keep front of mind. So how do we, how do we create a fun, series where we can we can talk about it and really generate a lot of interest. Um, and I believe the name, I, I think it was you, Ronnie, who came up with it, um, comes from our sort of tagline that that what you say, your actions and what you say matter, actions matter. Um, and now we have actions matter, Lee, our man on the street. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's great. I, I, I give I give Bebo a lot of credit because the ethics office works really closely with corporate communications and they have a uh, a nice positive relationship, which isn't always the case. Um, so they, they can inform each other on the issues and also come up with creative ways to deliver those uh, uh, issues uh, out in the way the employees can understand. So uh, we came up with Actions Matterly based on Words and Actions Matter, which is the ethics office's tagline. We made him an investigative reporter because I remember the big issue at the time was we, we want employees to feel comfortable talking about uncomfortable subjects. So we, we, yeah, so we're like, let's tackle the tough issues. So we made him an investigative reporter. And then we actually interviewed real employees uh, where I think you all said it so well, like we made the character a little bit self-important, but maybe not so wise so that employees could correct. Yeah, so you're right, Ronnie. I, th I think the really important thing about that, and I just want to touch on it, is that in that man on the street campaign, it was really interesting because instead of scripting the employees, we put the employees with actions batterly and he had a script, but the employees didn't. And they always came up with the right answer, which I think was refreshing for us to see. Yeah, absolutely. And that was, that was the original concept of it. And I know, I know we went back and forth on it a lot. Um, and 
it, it is just, it is evidence that this is a very strong part and underpinning of the culture where we work. Um, and it was really great to sort of tee our employees up for success and not a single one of them without any prep got a single answer or situation wrong, which was amazing. And the enthusiasm with which that campaign was met was incredible. I mean, I think we all knew it would be successful, but um, it just automatically generated so much love um, and so much, uh, you know, enthusiasm, people wanting to be part of a next series of videos, people wanting to show the videos at their town halls. It was just like, you know, instead of us as a communications team having to go out to people and say, can you please show this at your next event? People were actually coming to us and being like, how do we get actions? (laughs) Um, Yeah. So it was really cool. So let me, uh, we'll we'll, uh, just quickly touch on this and we'll get into the, the, newer campaign but so then year two um i really thought this was a lovely idea on how to use the character so the characters had some some play within within bmo became kind of a rock star and so then they want uh, the first campaign was mostly focusing on speaking up and the importance of speaking up um so then we're like they wanted to have a, a town hall where we interviewed the ombudsman um employee relations uh ula and the ethics office and investigative services with the idea of let's talk about what happens mm-hmm. after you speak up to kind of uncover uh, the mechanics of that issue, which I thought was a really great way because one yeah. of the ways to build trust is to show people they want to know what's going to happen if I do this. Uh, so maybe you guys can just chat a little bit about like uh, year two of the campaign, just uh, um, which will lead us into year three. I mean, I mean, I, I think that employee psychological safety is so important in an organization and particularly within our bank. We want to be sure that employees are always comfortable to raise issues and that they know that those issues just kind of they don't go away. There is someone at the back end who's looking at it, taking it seriously, investigating the issue and then and then responding to that issue. And the employee might not know all the nuts and bolts of what's happening in the back, but they need to know that we're taking their concerns seriously. And and we wanted to talk about that. We wanted to talk about what happens after you raise a concern. And then also let people know that there is no retaliation. They can raise concerns and be free of, of any retaliation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was really important from a communication standpoint to sort of present the entire um, timeline of what would happen. Um, and that it isn't driven by people necessarily being malicious or, you know, making, uh, you know, purposely suspect choices. It's, it, this is, you know, this is life and we are all human and we, we do things, um, sometimes quickly and don't think about it, um, or whatever. We certainly, didn't come at it from a a standpoint, I feel, of here are some issues we need to address. It was really more about like, we really want our employee population to feel safe, to feel that they understand the process, that they understand it's serious, that they understand this is not just something we talk about. This is something that is really absolutely something we put our stock in and it's a huge part of our culture. Yeah. Yeah. And then to use... Yeah, so to, to, just before you continue, Ronnie, to, to use a character mm-hmm. like Actions Matterly to talk about these serious, heavy, weighty issues, it just really brought out the best, I think, in our employees, and it resonated. They really understood what Speak Up was. They got that their complaint or their issue doesn't just go nowhere. It, we are actually addressing it, and that town hall was really important to to hammer that home. Well, yeah, we so we used the character to... Uh to really give voice to some of this leadership. Uh, so mm-hmm. instead of interviewing employees, we were essentially interviewing uh, the, these leadership positions who uh, and humanizing them and letting them explain in their own words what, you know, what happens. Um, uh, and, I, and I love that you guys use, use this character that way because uh, also one of the things that actions can do is voice the issues that you um, that employees have, but you don't want them to say. You know what I mean? Because someone might be shy about someone might be shy about asking a question. So we could take those maybe anonymous questions and give the char- filter it through the character, so uh, they can ask these really important questions maybe in a fun way. Um, so we jump ahead to you know 2020, uh, which is a crazy year, right? Um, and we're in the middle of this pandemic and we're all working from home and, and it, it presents its own set of risks. So uh, 
before we bring it back around to actions, do you guys want to share a little bit about um, just sort of what that what those risks are and what the challenges were for the ethics office um, during the pandemic? Yeah, so I mean, the pandemic has been really challenging for I think every corporation, every bank, every person who has an employee who is now working remotely. And I really have to call BMO because I think that we've done a fantastic job of supporting our employees. Like we're focused on mental health. HR is doing regular pulse checks. We bring in doctors to talk about COVID. We do all these really great things. And the one thing that BMO does support is to make sure that our employees get support from an ethical standpoint as well. And, And that was really important to us. And so the work... Work from working from home brings a, about a lot of challenges. I mean, people aren't sitting around a water cooler. They're not getting coffees and talking about the ethical issue. They can't just stand up and talk to their buddy next door and say, hey, what do you think about X, Y, or Z? It's a really different working environment. And so, yeah, I mean, I mean, it brings up a lot of challenges. Speaking up is a challenge. I think every company is facing this. We have to be sure that people can feel free to speak up without retaliation in a work from home environment. I mean, this, this is huge. People have to be able to get in touch with the right person and escalate an issue. And that's sometimes the only way that you're going to get insight into what someone's doing in a, in a COVID work from home environment. Confidentiality is really important as well. I mean, you know, you're trying to find a place to work, but you have a crying baby in the background or a spouse lurking or a roommate. And we have to remember that we have a duty of confidentiality to our customers, to the institution. That's really important in a work from home environment. And then also changing how we work. This has completely revolutionized how we work. Uh, We have smart home devices that could be listening in on conversations that you're having, confidential conversations, or dressing more casually. And it's not about the clothes, really. It's about not having, and I think Actions Matter Lee uses this. He says this perfectly. He says, don't have this sweatpants state of mind. And I love this because it's not about what you wear. It's about representing yourself and your company in the most ethical way that you should be at all times, right? So just don't have that sweatpants state of mind. I thought it was great. And so um, working from home brought about a lot of challenges for, again, every company, every bank, but we wanted to tackle it creatively and strategically. Yeah, and I would add, like, uh, when, when Carrie and the ethics team came to us and sort of sort of brought, uh, brought forward this idea about gosh, we're working from home and we are supporting, you know, from an HR perspective, a wellness perspective, we're making sure employees have all these regular touch points. And and here's one thing we also want to make sure we we add to this support pile is understanding this is still something we are very, very um, serious and supportive of and something we want to make people aware of. Um, And it was eye opening for me as well, because it's it's hard. Everyone is dealing with a different situation when we're, whether we're work from home or work from work, it's challenging. And some of the issues we, we kind of had actions illustrate are, um, not unusual. And it was, it was definitely a learning experience for us as communicators and trying to figure out how to actually represent those and in a pandemic environment where really actions has to film it by himself in his home. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so let's, let me, that's a, that's a good, let me jump in on that just to give some context. This is great. So, um, uh, so we have these issues of confidentiality and what I think, so we have all these issues that we want to reinforce. So you all uh, approached us about bringing actions back, but we're like, what can we do? Like, we're not sending film crews around and everything. Um, uh, you know, there's, so, so there's a challenge of like, how do we create content thoughtfully um, in this environment to address these issues. Um, so, uh, Tiffany, I think you came, uh, you, you and your team came up with the idea first of a, a photo series, spot the problem. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the evolution of like bringing back actions and, and the idea, and then we can talk about how that evolved. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, the way it evolved was actually genius. And it wasn't uh, maybe the best idea in the beginning, but it, it came out to, to just something that was Oh, was it genius? Was our idea genius? Is that what you're saying? Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I'm 
what I'm saying, Ronnie, is that you guys are you guys are geniuses. Um, and now you're supposed to tell me I'm a genius. It, this is, yeah. <laughs> um, but it did come from the idea of you know I don't I think uh, my colleague Melissa and I were like you know when you get on back in the day when we used to get on an airplane or a porter flight uh, and you would circle you know what's different between two photos. Do we do like here's the ideal setup and here's what the risks are? And we kind of started with that and it just didn't feel felt too heavy felt serious. Um, and then we, we started thinking, what if actions could come on back? And fortunately, Carrie and the ethics office were very supportive and excited about it. Um, and that that's when we reached out to you guys and sort of started throwing around the concepts and came up with, I think, what was a much more fulsome proposal or uh a much more engaging proposal, certainly in the end. Um, and it is one where I, I've said to all of you before that we did see people coming back to each post multiple times and looking at things and pulling them out and the commenting and engagement and the excitement about, you know, actions being back and people coming in to make random comments about, you know, hey, he has a printer and we're not supposed to have those or, um, you know, actions. Did you get enough toilet paper? I don't know. It was very, very funny and very, very engaging. And the way that employees just felt so open about approaching what we actually had in the end was was great. So it did turn into a bit of a spot the difference piece, I think, in an unintentional way. Um, <laughs> well, so let me let me, uh, let me let me lay this out just for those just to make sure we have a clear picture of what we ended up doing. So we started out with like the spot the problem idea because we're like it's a photo series we might be able to take photographs that might be easier to execute and then we realized that that's not um wasn't quite uh, Thanks engaging for joining didn't us bring for out this the episode the of creativity and compliance so we ended up if you doing enjoyed and we the were episode very lucky make sure to subscribe and leave a review actions matterly who's um uh in toronto uh is also a bit of pro that i've been working with for years so he had some basic production equipment and his wife's also uh, uh, an actress. Uh, so they had a, uh, it, by the way, you can buy these for less than a hundred bucks, like a little pop-up green screen. We were able to film things with an iPhone um, and take uh, photos with an iPhone as well with a small lighting kit, which is also less than a hundred bucks. And um, what we did is we, we shot, uh, uh, took photos of actions doing improper, I was going to say dumb, but let's say improper work from home things um, with a caption. So it was almost like a cartoon, you know, a captioned um, picture series. And then we were able to have kind of almost a selfie video feel of the actor uh, in his uh, overconfident personality, then explaining the lesson behind it. So photo series followed by uh, a selfie video that was like 60 seconds and we were able to produce that in their home with them producing it themselves and editing it behind the scenes. It was really just a, 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 an interesting way to produce things. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, any, any other? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think um, the genius of the idea is that we, you're right, Ronnie, we came up with this comic strip type of thing. And so then we put these pictures of actions doing these things on in, a, in, a, in an inappropriate way, but that was posted. And then we asked our employees, like, what's Actions doing that's wrong here? They caught it. They, they totally nailed it. And then a week later, well, later on in the week, actually, we would then post that 60-second video that explained the thing that Action was doing and why it was wrong and, you know, where you could go to get help or if you had more questions or, you know, how to speak up. That was one of the topics. Or, you know, um, a home listing device why is that a privacy issue and linked directly to the privacy policy? So I think, I think it really resonated well and people were absolutely engaged and they kept coming to Chuck and, and Tiffany saying they kept coming back. They loved it. Yeah. Tiffany, to, to walk people through the mechanics of, of how you rolled it out from a communication standpoint. Cause I think a, a lot of ethics officers, even when they, they come up with good content, they're always looking for creative ways to get that out to people. Yeah, for sure. And I think we are, we've, it, with everyone's um, partnership and, and help through the years, we have established this, you know, this is about the long game and having a character that our employees are very invested in and having invested first and in making sure they do really, we have this great embedding of 
um, ethics as a culture. Uh, so this was really our focus from a communication standpoint was really about amping up the engagement. Um, and we did that uh, by, as you mentioned, and I forgot that it went down this uh, path first of being just photos and then we were able to get video. Um, but we did it uh, on each Monday. Uh, we did a series for six weeks. I think it was in total. Um, and on the Monday, uh, the first post would be, as you say, this um, photo series slash comic strip uh, of action working at home and, for example, being in a bathroom and frying some bacon while he was taking a, a client call uh, and then putting it out there to employees to be like, oh, actions, what is he What is he forgetting uh, to pay attention to in this crazy scenario? Um, and having employees have a period of two to three days where they would come in and comment and, and actually have discussions amongst each other within the post commenting section. Uh, and then on the Thursday morning, we would release the short selfie video uh, which was, they were about 45 to 60 seconds. Uh, and it would be actions going through the code, the policy, and why this wasn't a great idea to, uh, you know, behave this way kind of thing. Um, and then on that Thursday, you would actually get more engagement of people coming back to say, oh, yes, I got it right. I spotted that right away and, and sort of continued the discussion that they, they had been having. Um, and then we would include that in a weekly uh, newsletter that we push out as an email across the enterprise every Friday, uh, just to ensure that people could see the full scope of the entire period. Um, and we do have a, a page dedicated to actions on our internal system, our internal intranet, where people can see the entire campaign in its glory. Yeah, and I have to say, so, sorry, and I have to say that these videos, they don't they're not just lasting through this campaign. What we're doing is, you know, if a leader is coming out to us and saying, I have a question about confidentiality that my, my employees are bringing up, we can then link to the video. We can do it in newsletters. We can do it in daily huddles. We, it's just a great way to spread communication. So maybe someone who hasn't seen the campaign in a certain line of business we can then go directly to them and link to the page. And I, I think it's had longer lasting effects than just the fall campaign. So the uh, the initial thing, the photos are posted on the company intranet page, essentially, like, right? That's okay. So the company intranet page, so there's sort of a fun graphics that drive, you know, people can click on and take some of the campaign. Then you, uh, you release the video later, so you get that sort of weekly engagement on the topic. And then it sounds like then you house it somewhere that you can link to later. Correct. Yeah. So we do. Yeah, we have a fairly robust internal um, intranet for all of our employees where we have the uh, the first series, the man on the street actions matterly series is there. So our clips from the town hall. Um, so we have all of that still exists. These are this. These are things that are really fairly evergreen. These are, you know, not one and done kind of campaign ideas. Um, and for a period of six weeks, we would have two posts per week. Um, first the strip, then the video uh, on our company intranet. And, you know, our lines of business would pull things that were specific to them or that they felt would be more interesting to their employees. Uh, so it had just an incredibly wide reach and will continue to, as Carrie says. Could you share a little bit about, like uh, you said, people keep coming back to the content that were the engagement levels, something about the, anything about, people always want to know about measurement. So um, anything you can share about that? Listen, we always know that it's going to be successful, but, you know, we also always hope that it's going to be successful. And uh, the level of engagement on this particular campaign was incredible. We have always seen good views, good uptake, good sharing across our entire organization of the actions uh, material. This one was particularly successful in, in terms of engagement. And I think a lot of it is that we have built, we have built a reputation and we have built excitement around the character. Um, and people, even when we announced, hey, stay tuned, we're going to have this actions matterly character come back. People were coming to just a simple news item post on our intranet and saying, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see actions again. Uh, so we knew we had something. Um, and we tried to really amp up the engagement by asking a question, which was um, something we worked very closely, obviously, with Carrie and her team on to say, you know, draw employees in and say, what are you seeing? And tell us about what you think Actions is doing wrong. But the uptake was great. And we did see on every single post through the campaign, people coming back multiple times to check on the video, to check on what other people were saying, to make another comment. Um, 
So by far one of the more successful campaigns we've had internally for sure. I wanted to ask one more question, but Tom, let me just check in with you. Did you have a, any thoughts or you always have an interesting insight into this? Just any thoughts, or questions that you have for these guys? So it's not really questions, Ronnie, but it's uh, some observations. There's three or four points that I wanted to highlight that we've talked about. Uh, the first is whenever you have a compliance character that's a rock star, or I probably should say you never have a compliance character that's a rock star. So actions matter like being a rock star at a financial institution. Uh, that is something to definitely celebrate. But uh, Kerry talked about uh, trust and speak up, that actions matter like drives trust within an organization, Ronnie. And, and I know we from time to time touch upon communications as a tool, but we rarely talk about it as a tool to drive trust. So I was really intrigued that she sees that as a, a key component of the campaign and that she or the campaign is able to filter issues, uh, somewhat difficult issues perhaps through actions himself uh, by him asking the questions. Uh, And then um, for those uh, compliance geeks out there who always want to tie this to the regulators, regulators and the regulatory requirements, Tiffany talked about the measurements. So um, in my world, it's all about documentation and audit trails and to have measurements that you can present to a regulator this is our campaign. This is what it was based upon. This is what we think we got. But this is the actual numbers that we got. Uh, that's that's pretty significant. Uh, and then finally is for the compliance officer listening to this, think about the collaboration you've heard in this podcast. Uh, you had a great idea. Uh, you have a great character. Uh, but it's ethics and compliance working with communications where comms brings the comms skills to this. How do we release it? How do we... Uh, advertise it? How do we uh, build up um, some buzz and excitement around it and then bring it out? And I don't think many compliance officers think about how you deliver a message uh, through the lens of a communications professional. And so I'm really intrigued by that collaboration that we see uh, in this campaign. And it shows the power of really cross-siloed collaboration for the ethics and compliance professional. So I, I love that you pointed that out because actually that wasn't on our sort of uh, outline here, but it is something that I want to give you guys uh, the BMO team props on. I, I talk with uh, ethics teams uh, from all different industries uh, around the world, and often it's an antagonistic relationship, the ethics and the comms team. Um, there's, And that's partially just because they haven't forged to that. Uh, relationship to work together. And so you guys deserve a lot of credit for that. And for those of you listening out there, make friends with your comms team so that they can, you can support each other. Um, I'd like to wrap up just, uh, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about a specific strategy here where we created this custom character to deliver these messages, which I think is a fantastic idea. But more broadly, what we're talking about is using, uh, being uh, able to use entertainment on such difficult subjects gives you the ability to communicate these things more effectively. So to uh, Tiffany and Carrie, just any thoughts or lessons learned or, or things that you advice you give others who are thinking of going down this path? I'm just curious what you guys might offer up. Yeah. I, so, so I just want to comment on comms and ethics and compliance working well. And, and the point that you brought up, Tom, I, I think that, It starts with trust. I mean, I trust that Tiffany and our team know what they're doing and they know how to drive employee engagement. And so we rely heavily on that. But you're you're right that ethics and conduct issues are serious and they can have massive reputational and financial risk on any institution. And so to be able to deliver micro learning in between your annual training that targets specific difficult issues that then also encourages people to look at it in a fun way. It helps them to retain things. It's more digestible. It's interactive. It leads to better retention, better recall. It leads to ultimately better employees. And so you take a difficult situation, you sprinkle in a little bit of actions, and I I think you have uh, magic. You have excellent micro learning for employees. They come away learning something very important. And next time, They think about actions when they're faced with a difficult ethical situation and they say, what would actions do? Yeah, that, that is, I mean, that's perfect. And I would say also we, I I was, 
I am thrilled as a communicator to have an ethics team that comes to us and uh, is comfortable working with us and trusts us to do this because it is, it's so important. It is so important as a subject. It is so important that this isn't just part of your annual training. It's part of your everyday thought process. Um, and it's exciting for me as a communicator to take a really chunky subject and be like, how do we make this fun? Because I do believe very, very much that this is this is how you create powerful communication. You make it creative, you make it fun, you make it something that resonates. That's what you do. And we are very fortunate to have ethics partners who work with us happily, readily. And we also know they're the subject matter experts and they will bring us the content we need. Um, so it's a very symbiotic relationship and I, I would encourage everyone to have it because it it can work really, really beautifully. <laughs> Well, so let's all make sure that we're not in a sweatpants state of mind, which will, you, you, I guess, you all, you all have to like uh, come to come to L&E and we'll maybe share a sample of the video so you'll know what we're talking about. But that always brings us a laugh. Uh, so that that's it. Thanks so much, everybody. Tom, Tom you usually ask me to say goodbye. I'm going to ask you to say goodbye. So I'm not nearly as articulate as you as saying goodbye. So I'll say this is Tom Fox with Ronnie Feldman. Uh, with Tiffany and Carrie from BMO, and we wanted to thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any uh, interest in following up, check out the uh, Learnings and Entertainment website. Contact Ronnie through LinkedIn. He's always available to connect, and there's some great ideas out there. And the one thing that I would leave with you is the only thing, and let me emphasize, the only thing that limits you as a compliance professional is your imagination. I hope you'll join us again uh, for our next episode. So, Ronnie, say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Creativity and Compliance. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a review.